the pest extermination industry is a low barrier to entry requiring a license which can be obtained in 25 hours of study, a leased utility vehicle, $5,000 in equipment and chemicals. The industry, however, is fragmented and with exception of a Flick now owned by blah, blah, blah company and rent a kill from the UK. The business owners are predominantly uneducated, unambitious, uh, and small-minded. I have originally grown to be in the top three of my geographic areas in two years, having four trucks on the road. I can replicate and grow very quickly within my geographic area. I am currently struggling to find a reason to buy competitors as the majority of the work is not contracted um, other than a database. Uh, they have a little to offer. They have a little to offer. Have you seen other low barrier entry businesses successful in the QLA model? If so, what type of businesses? I told you, uh, crematoriums, uh, uh, funeral parlors, etc. Um, the two main competitors I have mentioned in the above question are also involved in hygiene, sanitary disposal service. Of course, with the current economic situation and because of the dependence uh, uh, on other businesses uh, for revenue, uh, restaurants, movie theaters, offices, this part of the business is not of any value whatsoever. Cleaning businesses, too, are heavily reliant on commercial work. Uh, these businesses may be on the verge of collapsing, if not already. Have you seen other businesses that have combined services to make more money with a greater efficiency and succeed? Yes, I have. What strategy would you suggest? Well, uh, you named one cleaning service with guard service. Uh, cleaning service with guard service with outside maintenance. <sighs> After you retired, you, uh, you had two characters come live with you. Characters. Oh, yeah, mentees. Uh, to be close to the QLA source who fucked off to be in uh, bloody show business, man plans and God laughs. Did any of these assholes who uh, fucked off into showbiz become anything? Uh, no. But you're not talking about um, Ducey, Mikey Ducey. He never came to live with me. Uh, are they now world famous fucking Clint Eastwood level actor? No, no, they're not. If so, how have they used QLA? They haven't, they failed. Uh, they have because they weren't good actors. Uh, respectfully, I know that uh, you come from seriously high level hardcore background, CIA, assassination, OCS, or the people gone missing, etc. But there is something more to the story. You have avoided trouble, managed to not push the powers to be too much, and know where the line is. No, okay, I'm going to read it out. No doubt, instinct, sixth sense, learned from your father. I can understand this personally, but how to manage not to piss off people at the top when you're starting out more rich and powerful and can fuck you if uh, you seem arrogant, uh, confrontational, boastful, overconfident, uh, cocksure. Sometimes I have suffered from people seeing me as too high status and wanting to knock me down to size. In business life, from uh, their own uh, jealous non high performance that uh, they are also part. No, I didn't I didn't uh, you know, I didn't experience any of that. I've always been the same as you uh, would call it uh, uh, arrogant, confrontational, boastful, overconfident, cocky. I mean, that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. Do you think Donald Trump or Elon Musk have changed? Uh, can you describe how to how you, how to t take a, an a, an option out on the stock in the eighties? No, I'm not going to explain. I'm not going to explain. Can't do. You can't take an option public anymore. Don't waste your time. I am having a tough time finding a chairman. I have spoke to a bunch of people. I have three people that have 38 years of experience running hospitals, and they have agreed to be on the board, but uh, don't want to be chair position. I know I just need to keep pushing forward. Do you have any thoughts? I've told, I'm going to say it in the, in the close, but you got to triple your output. Will you become my chairman? No, thank you. Uh, can you have, um, uh, can you have both or do you need both any time a board of directors and a board of advisors? You only need 
a board of directors, a board of advisors, or for those who don't want to uh, take the liability, uh, direct liability of being a shareholder in the company as a director. Uh, in light of the lockdown and likely prolonged social distancing measures, do you think that making presentations to bankers for finance over the phone will be sufficient? Uh, Skype, initial phone call, well, it's either email, phone call, email, or phone call, email, phone call. Uh, but now they're not going to be, they're going to be few or far between meetings, so it's got to be Skype or, uh, or, uh, or some uh, tool like Skype, like Zoom. Obviously, there will be a lot of companies that will be struggling through this period, which present a lot of opportunities for QLA acquisition. Do you have any suggestions how to identify those? Yep. Healthcare, the lower end of healthcare, and technology. In setting up the board members, does the chairman need to have M&A experience? Uh, yes. Or should they be suitable if they had a significant experience of organic growth? M&A is better, but better for both. How long till we see a recovery in the economy? I believe uh, 18 months to 24 months. And uh, back to some normalcy, uh, maybe uh, two to three years. And um, we may be in uh, mass forever. Will we see a depression or would Trump change the tide? Uh, we may see a depression. How will the coming election affect the current climate? Uh, it's not. To research and understand better the health sector, are there any source of information? No. On LinkedIn, my CV is not as strong as uh, and seasoned as potential board members. How do I overcome this? Well, since you're a woman, why don't you grow some balls? It's important to keep board uh, separate from each other, but keep them in the loop vis-a-vis -vis information. Ah, uh, Walter, okay. Post-COVID-19, what are the top three industries? Healthcare, there aren't three. And will we see, what one are we never going to see again? Well, you're going to see some form of um, uh, cruise shipping, but it's not going to be anything like it is now. What are your thoughts on manufacturing in the U.S.? Any particular goods? No. Healthcare. If it's not healthcare or tech, short it. Board of Directors, what does this relationship look like? Equity and expectations. I set, set with them. What are the expectations I set with them? Full-time, part-time. Um, it's all online, kids. Remember, non-executive director versus executive director. Your opinion on what kind of MO real estate would you invest? I'm not sure what that means. Stock exchange funds of commercial office. I wouldn't invest in any kind of real estate. Commercial real estate is dead for a while. How do you apply QLA on real estate? Invest model become a business. It seems to be uh, healthcare technology. In real estate, do I need a board of directors? Yes, you do. You need everything. Okay, kids. Um, I would highly recommend um, that you um, at least triple your output. Remember, uh, you've, heard, you've seen on previous emails, excuse me, not emails, you've seen on previous uh, YouTube postings uh, dating back years. I used to give six to eight presentations a day uh, in Manhattan. Uh, well, one of the reasons I made six to eight uh, presentations a day, and some of those presentations lasted five minutes, some lasted five seconds, some lasted 30 minutes was because the, uh, the oil market was collapsing. Uh, and the, uh, just as today, uh, the acquisitions I made when oil was 40, $41 a barrel were not worth what we paid for them uh, when oil went to uh, $20 a barrel. The same is true today. Uh, no asset that has a deal that's been done this calendar year is worth what you paid for it. Unless you just made it in the last few weeks like some of uh, the kids did. 
we've got a Canadian kid, 34 years old, um, who came to the July seminar last year, who I talked about, and you, uh, uh, you didn't really have time to see the webinars of, but you heard me talk about him, uh, he's from Toronto. Uh, he just uh, completed his fifth acquisition about two weeks ago during the corona. Uh, the, uh, so far within uh, nine months or so, he's created $4 million uh, in EBITDA. And before his year um, is up in July, he should uh, add another million dollars in EBITDA, or five million dollars in EBITDA. Uh, you put a uh, value on it, is it worth 10 times EBITDA, or 15 times EBITDA, or 20 times EBITDA? Because he's in the, in the techie, I would imagine that he's probably at the 15 times EBITDA. So um, four times 15 is 60 million, call it 50 million. Uh, he's created a value from scratch. Uh, we have, uh, I just opened an email this morning, a kid in New York, which he's in, the, he's in Corona Central, Manhattan. He just added an acquisition to, uh, vertical to his, um, healthcare, um, uh, first couple acquisitions. Uh, and, uh, he was at the hardcore in November. Uh, the, uh, he, uh, completely pivoted from his, uh, education or background and uh, into healthcare. Uh, he looked at a couple other things before uh, he finally uh, ultimately ended up in healthcare. Uh, we're getting a lot of emails. We're getting a lot of requests. We got a you know tentative request to go on CNBC and explain to them how I knew negative oil was coming. And in fact, at your seminar uh, in the first day, I talked about uh, five dollar oil, and you all uh, kind of chuckled. And then I said negative oil. Of course, here we are with negative oil for the uh, the month ending today, I believe, or yesterday. Um, it's going to get a lot worse. Uh, when you think about oil or derivatives of oil or things that are complementary, supplementary, that oil is supplementary, complementary, uh, to is endless. Virtually everything you look around the room here, I see plastic, I see rubber. Uh, you know, I see all kinds of things that uh, oil has to do with. Uh, and um, and even though the next May, uh, month's contracts are just broke below $20 a barrel, that's still a, a huge drop, a huge drop. And it's simple supply and demand. I can't be the only guy that knows that 30 million barrels a day, between 25 and 30 million barrels a day over production worldwide um, is not good. And I first predicted it in 2014. OPEC and a few others uh, came together, um, but uh, the glut in the oil situation now uh, uh, happened because one, we have massive oversupply. Uh, Two, we have uh, the uh, use of oil, not just because of Corona, because we're not traveling, etc., but uh, is massively reduced and the uh, OPEC, the world bodies, are not as powerful as they once were vis-a-vis uh, -vis controlling the price of oil. Now, we brought on the oversupply with frack, uh, fracking in the northern United States and in parts of Canada. We brought on the oversupply because having been an oil guy many years ago, decades ago, all you know and all you learn is rotate to the right. That's the way the um, drill bit goes and to produce. Rarely do you ever get oil guys that are willing to shut in. Now, one of the reasons that they're gonna, the difficulty with shutting in oil is it's very, very expensive to shut in a well, uh, tempor even temporarily. And, uh, the, uh, and nowhere are any of the numbers um, really showing what a true shut in of oil would be. Another stat that's uh, important for you guys to understand, uh, the Federal Reserve in America, for those of you Americans, and it really uh, overlaps to other countries, they say there's going to be a $25 billion loss per day uh, for, uh, because of the corona. Well, I guesstimate there's going to be uh, probably at least a $10 billion a day in addition to the 25 loss to lack of productivity. Because if you think working from home, and if you think uh, productivity is the same uh, without accountability face to face, uh, you're living in a dream world. You're living in a dream world. Um, the uh, even though things are going to get worse before they get better, uh, and I know you're all concerned when you're going to get come to the seminar. 
It may be in July, it may not be. Uh, but then again, when we pick a date, and it's, the date's going to be based on the availability vis-a-vis countries unlocking down, you may not be able to make it. So the chances of all you being in one event are pretty slim. Uh, but I will honor my, uh, what I said, that you're going to come to a seminar. Uh, the, uh, if you can't come to a seminar for a year, I'll think about uh, uh, maybe not honoring it, but uh, I'm sure we'll get some seminars off uh, in the next year. Um, the um, people will take meetings now on the phone. It's easier to get by um, the, uh, the secretaries and assistants, the gatekeepers now. Uh, it's pretty easy to get a, a Zoom and a, a Skype meeting. Uh, and uh, so far, touch wood, we have uh, had um, very uh, positive responses from the big accountants and the big lawyers uh, in relationship to um, them uh, agreeing to uh, delayed fees. But if, you're, if you've only made 50 phone calls, you know, you got to at least triple your output. I, I, I still go by two, you're 2,000 phone calls away from a deal. And everybody that does a deal based on the formula is pretty much a short millionaire off the first deal. And that's why we say the first deal should be a million, million and a half. The second deal, a million and a half to two or three. The next deal, et cetera, et cetera. So by the time you've done five deals, you have acquired equity. You accumulated equity. Um, in uh, your portion of uh, the portfolio. Um, we have uh, at least uh, two kids, apparently, uh, that are going to wind up uh, being billionaires uh, vis-a-vis government contracts because of uh, corona. Uh, as I get more information and verify that information, I'll pass it along. But we have two, two guys in the hunt um, that are uh, doing uh, not dissimilar to I did. Um, you know, many years ago when I got um, government contracts uh, to supply j- uh, jet fuel uh, uh, to the federal government, to the Defense Fuel Center. Uh, it is a big deal that oil went negative. We're not going to do away with 15, 20 million barrels of oversupply overnight. And um, just as 10,000 energy companies went out of business, when oil went from 41-ish to 5 or 6-ish, uh, many, many mo- more energy companies are going to go out of business than 10,000 when I was there. And uh, I never thought I'd see, and I wrote this before it went negative, when it got down to four, $5 oil, and they said it's the lowest price since 1986, $5 oil. Of course, I was in the hunt in 1986, $5 oil, uh, and... Uh, the, uh, I would listen to, uh, to my post about, which was my closing remarks of two or two and a half minutes to the um, uh, active QLA uh, mentees that I gave. Uh, I didn't post the whole, uh, I did a, a, a similar um, Q&A for them, uh, uh, but yours is just separate. But I would go back and I would uh, look at that post and, uh, because it's very accurate. You'll kick yourself in the ass. Uh, we, we're, we're closing deals um, almost every day. Um, I look forward to uh, seeing you at a seminar. There, are, So far, uh, the questions you asked uh, were uh, more or less legitimate because you haven't heard. But if, when you go through the gigs and you go through the website and you go through all the material... Every question on this little question Q and A session was answered. Every single one. Okay, kids, I want you to run towards a gunfire and kill everybody metaphorically to your quantum leap. <laughs>